Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, thank you for being flexible with our uh, link today. Apologies for that little bit of a snafu, but we're looking forward to today's session. I'm just going to give maybe 30 seconds or so more for some additional attendees to trickle in as everyone's getting the um, email correspondence of the switchover. So we'll get started in just a moment here, but really appreciate everyone's time today. And uh, we'll get started in just a moment. Great. So we'll go ahead and kick it off. We might have some more attendees joining us here momentarily, but hello. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank you to Startup Nation for helping us co-host today's session. My name is Megan Wright, and I am the Small Business Association's lead here at Dell Technologies. And we have a really great session ahead of us. So I will waste no more time in uh, introducing our speaker today. And please feel free as the session goes on to ask questions in the chat. And we'll also have a break for a Q&A at the very end. So you can um, also save your questions for the end and we'll have our great uh, speaker today go through those and get those answered live. So I'm joined by Katie Drozd with our complex solution specialist team here at Dell Technology Small Business and Katie is well into her third year here at Dell with a really great extensive knowledge around our larger enterprise grade solutions for startups and small businesses. So uh, without further ado, welcome Katie and I will let you take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. Yes, thank you everybody for joining here today. So we have a lot of really great content that we're, we're going to go through a couple of different lines of businesses, uh, different areas of hardware. We're going to do a little bit of explaining on what each piece of hardware, what different, what differentiates them, you know, why they're important, pretty much what they can do for you and how it all ties together. You know, there's going to be Different, yeah, about four different topics we cover. And at the end, we just want to make sure that we leave this session with a good, a good knowledge base on how they all fit together and incorporate. So starting off, uh, just a little introduction. I know Megan said that I am a complex solution specialist. I do work with small businesses. So anywhere from businesses with about two to three people to all the way up to a hundred or a couple hundred. So I definitely get to see um, the, the much more small side and then kind of that small to medium range, but I cover hardware needs and technology concerns from, from all sizes. Um, they're all very similar in ways and they can all be different. So whether or not you see the topics here listed, server networking, storage and security, maybe you know about them, maybe you know absolutely nothing about them. Um, there's always a spectrum of knowledge. So you could either be on the lower end of a spectrum or you could be on the higher end of the spectrum where you've heard all this before. Always. All right, perfect. So kind of moving forward, let's talk about where technology fits in today with the modern business. So in this world today, te technology is everywhere. I don't even have to begin to mention everything that uses technologies. I mean, all the way from the phones we hold in our hand to groceries showing up at our door to packages being delivered overnight to the, the, the computers we're using right now, it's right in front of us to be able to watch this broadcast. I mean, technology is all around us. We, the business world is completely encompassed with technology. Why is that important? We've got to stay up with the times. So West technology changes, if we're lagging behind, that's going to hinder us further down the road. When you get a new phone or you get a new laptop, it's a little bit of a learning curve that you have to make to be able to understand the technology in front of you. But the, the longer you wait to continue your education and your understanding of technology in this world today, the harder that it, that is to kind of catch up and play catch up later on. Data-driven, data is all around us. I mean, from the text we send our, on our phones to the emails that we send to our colleagues to the pictures we take, data is everywhere. We see hard drives, we see um, flash drives, we see SD cards, we hear of things like cloud storage. It's everywhere, everything is data. Think of it that way in your business. We all think of data too as files or you, know, you see your, how much storage has been used on my computer or your phone when it starts to scream at you, telling you you're running out of space, this is all data. <clears throat> and we have to be aware and keep our awareness up of where that data affects our business. You know, when, when we are dealing with hardware, we're dealing with computers, we're dealing with maybe Wi-Fi, internet, without the pure understanding of why data is important to correlate with each of these things, we could start to see a little hinder in productivity with your IT infrastructure. 
the backbone of our business relies on everything that I've just mentioned. So we have to be ambiguous to the changing environments. That continuing education, knowledge is power. And the more knowledge we have about what the world is going to be throwing at us from a technology standpoint, either in a week, two weeks, two years, or 10 years, the more uh, kind of staying ahead of the curve, the more knowledge we have, the easier that this is going to be. It's going to be a seamless transition for you and your business, whether this might be your first business that you might be starting or you've done five or 10 and you've heard of everything I'm saying, it's always important for a refresher or for a start of new knowledge. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the cloud. Um, I know we hear it all the time. Um, we hear of things, just trigger words. We hear of Azure from Microsoft. We hear of, you know, Amazon has cloud, Dell has cloud. There's clouds everywhere. We see it on our iPhones. Uh, what is cloud? You know, why is it important? Why is it relevant? I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with, this is going to be a presentation about hardware. So everything that we're going to kind of dive in today, all the pieces of hardware, the different, you know, pieces of the puzzle we're going to put together, this is all an on-premise solution for IT infrastructure. The cloud is out there. I'm sure we all know what the cloud is. There are things like hybrid cloud where you can have hardware in-house, and then you can also put things on the cloud, and then there's full cloud. So those things definitely exist. I'm not going to pretend like they don't, but today we're going to try and visualize that everything we're talking about is in-house, it's on-premise, something you can touch, something malleable in your, and you can hold, you can see it, you can feel it. Um, that is kind of the track we're going to go down for today. Starting off with our first topic, what is a server? So we've got two pictures on screen. Um, we got one on the right side, lots of cabinets, server racks or cabinets, whatever you call them. You might see these in movies. If you've never seen one of these big data centers in real life, you might have seen them in person. You know, very large companies, including Dell itself, but any of any large company that you've ever heard of absolutely has a server cabinet or a server room. There are server buildings. Servers are everywhere. That is going to be the backbone of our IT infrastructure like we spoke about. Now that picture on the right can be a little intimidating when you're trying to grasp what is a server. You're like that's a lot of hardware, that's a lot of blinking lights. Like, do I really need all that? I, I'm just trying to start my business. No, the answer is no. So on the left side of this graphic here, you see a stand up tower server. So this is going to be, I compare this to kind of a desktop computer. So the computer that you might have under your desk or to the side of your monitor, it's about it's going to be about that form factor. Um, kind of sit, it, you know, maybe a foot and a half long, but instead of a desktop, it's a server. So it can still do the same things as in being a large scale computer that delivers applications or your business workloads to your employees, to your endpoint devices. Just the tower server on the left side of this graphic is a little more simplistic, entry level, small business focused, tower servers all the time. And then on the right side just shows you the potential of what servers could look like in a very heavy, heavy, heavy compute environment. So what is a server? If we take anything from this slide, it is a large scale computer. So it functions like a computer, but it is built to deliver applications to multiple end user devices. Now I'm gonna use that phrase a lot. What is an end user device, Katie? It is a laptop, it is a desktop. It can be anything you give your, your employees or your clients, whatever they're holding, wherever they need, whatever they need to pull files onto, how are they re accessing their inbox for their email? That device is going to be their endpoint device. So the server delivers applications like Outlook. It can be a, it can deliver files. It can provide, you know, DNS and domain controller services. There's a lot of different workloads and applications you can host on your server and deliver them to your employees. So a very central point, a single point of management. So if we have that understanding of what it is, you know, we, okay, we've got a box, it can deliver things. Um, it's a, it's a fancy computer. What, why do I need it though? So the ease of management, I just mentioned, you know, you have a single point, a single piece of hardware that is delivering all of these applications out to your employees. Maybe you have proprietary software or you're using QuickBooks or if, you know, for accounting, I hear a lot of Petrie or Dentrix for dentist offices or you know, SQL Server, SQL Database, Oracle. All of these workloads I'm mentioning can be installed on a server and then deployed to your endpoint devices. We've got this man here, he's juggling a lot of hats. He's got a laptop, calculator, microphone. He is a busy man. So the point of the server in a management perspective is you have a single point of management. 
you can manage all of your endpoint devices, the access to applications, the access to security, access to files, you can allocate and control all that from a single pane of glass. Now, even if you have one server, or you might have 20, if you have 20, most likely you've got a lot of employees, so you're still consolidating that management pane. That then drives down to saving time, either if, either if it's you and you are the IT person or you're calling your IT person and then you have to write a big check to your IT person to come and maintain your network, upload applications to all your devices. If they're only doing it to one server versus 25 end user devices, which one do you think is going to take more time? Which ones do you think is going to be a much smarter investment for your money? The server. It's quicker, it's faster, and it's easier saves the time piece that those endpoint devices whenever we see updates that flash on our computer or if you installed an application and it says you know refresh coming soon update or firmware you can do all that from a single point instead of doing this to every single desktop or thin client or laptop device that you have mm -hmm. security security is very important and we're going to touch on security a little more in depth later on but imagine having you know points of entry hackers malware all of these things can get into your network now if you don't have a centralized point of management then you're only juggling endpoint devices and that's all you have you have no server that could be 25 points of entry for any sort of data intrusion versus securing one and you can do umpteenth of securities from enterprise grade all the way to software but having a single point to control that makes things much simpler dependability now, if you've got 25 employees, 25 laptops, desktops, those might break and you've got someone knocking on your door saying, oh, my laptop's slow. I've got 18 applications on here and it's all being stored. I'm out of storage. Well, a server is a much more large scale like we talked about. So they are dependable because they're not, they're built to last. They're built to last five to seven years. They're built to house all of that storage that would then reside on people's laptops or employees. They are built to always be running. You know, when your laptop starts getting hot and the fan starts going and you think it's about to blow up, servers don't do that. They have internal cooling, internal power, all of everything that is built to consolidate all of its resources and keep it running, keep it cool, keep it on, keep it energy efficient is built into the hardware of a server. Looking under the hood for a little bit, I keep comparing it to this computer on steroids. You know, it's this much bigger, badder computer well, this just shows the similarity. So a little bits of side by side and some of these things you, you might have never heard of. And like I said, some everyone's on a spectrum here. So you've either got all this knowledge or none of it. Well, just for example, for those who, who don't know, you know what's inside of a computer. So we've got the client laptop desktop. You see the little sticker on the corner of your laptop that tells you what kind of processors in your laptop. Well, servers have processors too. The difference, laptops might have a four core single processor and a server might have dual 24 core processors. So just in that first spec right there, you see the difference of the power that a server can facilitate. RAM or memory. Everyone has RAM and memory in their laptop, maybe four or eight gigs. If, if it's a really nice workstation or a really good endpoint device, maybe 16 or 32, servers can have terabytes of memory. So similar components, just much more on a grand scheme to and it ties into they are built to be turned on. They are built to provide to multiple end users and house these much heavier, higher workloads. Even when I say heavier and high, servers don't look at workloads like that. It's workload A, workload B, workload C. Not more intensive, less intensive. All of that can be managed and allocated through a server. We've got some trigger words on here that I just want to highlight, network cards. So we're going to talk about networking next. You know, think of network if you want to start getting the wheels churning, Wi-Fi, internet, routers, cables. We've got all of it in every business, in every home. So you've got network pieces on servers as well as in laptops, hard drives. I mentioned USBs earlier. I've mentioned hard drives. I've mentioned cloud. Let's just keep these in the back of our mind for storage. Storage is a big piece of the IT puzzle, and it's, it's something that servers can encounter, and you know, I would say they can hold terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of storage whereas laptops might have a you know 960 gigabyte ssd in them so if you see that that's about one terabyte and servers can house 50 terabytes so there's a big difference but then at the end of the day there's still similarities 
And what I wanna drill home here is that it's similar to a computer, but it is designed differently with enterprise grade components that are built to house your workloads, built to successfully deliver these applications to your employees and built to last. The dependability, security, management, the security, all of it, all encompassed. I've mentioned management. So I know that when we start talking about all that and I could be speaking for none of you guys right now or everyone, it's kind of like, this is all great, but I, I don't know I don't know how to do it. You know, I can buy the box and I can make sure it can house all my stuff and it's got great components and all the specs look awesome, but how do I do it? Well, when it comes to server management, the, the big thing we drive home is that it's a single pane of glass. And there are many different ways you can manage a server. You can do it very manually. Um, the, the, I would say the GUI of a server, when you, when you do start up your server, it looks very similar to when you start up your computer. You know, if you're running Win 10 on your computer and you start it, if you started up a server right now, and I've seen it, it looks very similar to what your, your desktop looks like. Now that's the interface. So of course it's going to have different behaviors and you know, things work differently. But when you get to that initial point, that is where, where you're gonna sit, a very similar interface to where your computer is. Now you see this dashboard right here. What is this? Well, on Dell servers, there is a soldered piece on the motherboard called the lifecycle controller. It's about very small, probably the size of a dime or if not smaller. What that does is the lifecycle controller is it's a health tool. So that's what we call it health and maintenance. And how that correlates with management is the online GUI is what the picture is here. So on this picture, it connects to something called iDRAC. What does it stand for? Integrated Dell Remote Access Controller. So iDRAC 9 Enterprise is what's being shown here. And without getting too granular, what I want to pinpoint is this is where you manage your server. So you can access this from any internet page. So even if you're you know, on your server, looking at it, starting it up, you've connected it to a monitor, you can get to this page. Even if you're on a different computer and it has Wi-Fi, you can get to this page. So the fact that this management tool can be brought up anywhere and you can access your server should alleviate some of that stress on how, or it's not convenient. You can do it from anywhere. As long as you have internet, you can get to iDRAC is what we call this. So looking at the dashboard, if, if we look at a couple of these you know, little, little bars here, we've got graceful shutdown. You can shut down your server if you need to. You know, if, if you have a malware threat or your firewall's going off and you just need to shut it down or you need to restart it, you can do it from anywhere, from the iDRAC GUI. We look at things at the top, we've got a couple different options, system storage configuration, all of that, you can check the health of your system. You know, we see, and we tie that to the bottom there, we see green check marks, we see red an X. Well, all that's health. It's, you know, current statistics, real time of how your server is doing. Hard drives, how's my, I've got three hard drives. How are they doing? It's gonna give you either a green check, a red check or a yellow check. Where those differ, something's going right and great. Something is bad, bad as red, or you might need to check hard drive, you know, number two, because it's yellow. That could mean, you know, an alert light. That could mean, you know, something might happen. And whether you are the person that looks at this or you call, you know, your IT person and you say, hey, I've got a yellow light. All you have to do is look at iDRAC and it will tell you these things. You can allocate storage through iDRAC. I mentioned, you know, you've got an application and you've got employees and, you know, I need, I need enough storage to house my application. Well, you can control that and you control it just through this panel. Like any new software, this will take muscle memory to really, you know, figure out and you explore just as a, any new device you get at home or at work, you play around with it, you tinker. And a lot of that is how this is learned. A really, really cool feature of iDRAC, which, and we, you know, I, would, I speak to this all the time um, with small businesses, is the virtual console. So if you're looking at this, this is on the most right side of this graphic here. That virtual console is what is the lifesaver of iDRAC. And that is where no matter where you are, you could be in the Bahamas and your server is in California. If you have internet and you log into your iDRAC, you can click on that virtual console and blow that up full screen. And it is like you are plugged in directly to your server. So same thing, the same screen, it blows up like if you were plugged in directly a display cord from your server to a monitor, you can do that from thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away. So that's a big convenience factor of you can still check the health, the maintenance, make sure everything's functioning correctly and you do not have to be in the same room. 
Now, there are a lot of different ways you can manage servers. This is one of them. This is something that we have on all of our servers, but this is also an example because there are different ways of managing servers that do very similar things. If we take something from this, I encourage you guys to see that it is not so daunting and scary as it might sound when we talk about hardware components and you know you open the lid on a server and this looks crazy. It looks like a ginormous computer. That I understand can get a little a little hard to understand. You know, you take it step by step, but when you have that a bedrock foundation and then you you think about maintaining and how do I make this work for my business? This is it. It's all going to come down to how you manage it. You know, make the due diligence. The, the more you're managing your server, the more you're checking on the health of your server, the more you're going to have the confidence, that peace of mind and the sleep at night that it is functioning correctly, whether that is every day, once a week, once a month, or you have an IT guy who controls it all for you and is responsible for the maintenance. Any and all of the above is going to benefit you from a security standpoint, from a longevity standpoint, from the most, I would say, bang for your buck for your investment on your server, what you put into it from a maintenance and management, just the, I would say, the habitual piece of it, you're going to gain back from it. Transitioning to networking. Now, I did mention this earlier to get those wheels turning. So just to recap, we've covered server. What is a server? If we're thinking of a picture of it. Let's think of that tower server. We've got that desktop form factor, that stand-up server. And we talked about management, so we saw what that might look like if we wanted to go click in and check on our hard drives, or we check on our network, or green lights, yellow lights, and red lights. We saw where we can see that. But the second big hardware piece of our puzzle is networking. What is networking, you might be saying right now? Well, I mentioned earlier, we got routers, we've got Wi-Fi, we've got cables, we've got you know anything you want to think of, cable, like cable TV, internet, AT&T, Verizon, you think of CenturyLink, no matter what internet provider, all of these things, all of these trigger words tie into networking. Why is it important in a business? Well, networking, Think I like to think of networking as a highway. So if you've got the standard, a one gig network, you know, you got one, you know, one gig tunnel or a one gig highway going through your business from end user device, so laptop to server, or if you've got a one gig tunnel from a storage array or maybe some sort of storage device that you have, and you've got a one gig tunnel to your server. Now think of if you have 20 laptops all connected on a one gig tunnel to your server. That one gig tunnel is your network. So let's, I want to make that very clear, that one gig tunnel, one gigs network speed. Think of it as one lane. You got a one lane highway. I'm talking small town, one lane. You've got to pass cars to go any faster. Well, networking, if you've got 20 devices connected on your network, think of that as cars all trying to get down one lane. So that takes forever. You got 20 cars back to back and no one can pass. You've got to wait till all these requests are done and taken care of running through your network before you can get anywhere. Now think of a California highway. We've got seven, we've got nine lanes, whichever highway you wanna think of. How much faster can you go on that highway than you can on a one lane highway? How does this relate to networking? A one gig network versus a 10 gig network. Network speed is a big source of latency and pain points within businesses that sometimes are not thought of because you automatically think it's your, your laptop, or you think if you have a server, obviously something's wrong with the server because it's slow. Well, network is a ginormous piece of this puzzle that protects your investment because if you buy brand new laptops and a brand new server, but you have 50 people or 25 people on your network and you're, all, you're pushing all your requests through a one gig tunnel, things are not going to perform maybe up to par. Maybe one gig is plenty big, but for a lot of situations, we have to start transitioning into that 10 gig conversation to go from one lane to 10 lanes. You know, if you've got 10 cars in 10 lanes, everyone can get to the same point at once. But if you've got 10 cars in one lane, it's going to be a lot slower. How do we do this? Well, networking comes down to switching. So the switches are going to be that piece of hardware. And the switch on this graphic is going to be the rightmost graphic. So it's a box with a bunch of ports. Trigger words you might have heard of, fiber connections. Maybe you've heard of Ethernet or a Cat5 cable, a DAC cable. SFP, SFP+, plus, all these things I'm rattling off right here are all components of networking. If you've heard them, that is what they tie into and where it comes to network traffic is why it is important. 
how do we transition though? You know, Katie, we, we've got a great server and we are ready to transition, but we are not sure how. Well, different parts, different components come into it. So if you're ready to transition from a one gig or you just want to start a new business and you just want to start it at 10, you don't even want to mess around with that one gig, that one lane highway. All we need is you make sure you have a good 10 gig network card within your server and that it connects to a 10 gig switch. You know, you match things like form factors, you know, there are resources to make sure, ensure you have correct cabling, make sure everything works and all the components agree with each other. And then once you have that 10 lane tunnel, you see a lot less latency. So even if your server, you start tacking on more applications, you got this brand new server, it's working fine. You know, it's got 10 gig. You have that peace of mind that even if you continue to add applications and you continue to put more work into your server, trust me, most of the time your servers can handle it. Servers are built, they're, they are really cool machines. But the switching, that is where if you have the 10 gig or if you're on a one gig, as long as it's enough and you're getting good network bandwidth out of your connection speed, then you are going to see a, a very, very high reduction in latency. You know, we all, I compare it to the, the load, the load bar, whenever the circle keeps turning and turning and turning, I'm like, man, this is taking forever. That's network speed. And in your business, time is money. So when, when things are taking forever to load files, you can't pull them out and you gotta open a, an Excel file five minutes before a meeting because it takes so long to load network speed. Are you hardwired, you know, where a lot of people are in work from home right now? Are you hardwired into your router? I know people ask me that whenever everything starts to load. All of that is a direct network connection. So if we take something from this slide, tie it back, we've got a server. Let's protect our investment and make sure we're giving it a large enough highway or network tunnel to be able to function at the speed of the server. So we're either thinking one gig, we're thinking 10 gig, switches do, they are resilient. So when you get an enterprise grade switch, you do have that similar timeline of a five year investment. They should last you, they come small, they come large. You can get like an eight port, you can get with something with 24 ports and that's all for plugging endpoint devices into printers, laptops, Wi-Fi access points, storage devices, file storage devices, backup. All of these things integrate with your network. So that's always something we want to think of. If you're thinking server, you should be thinking network. Maybe you already have it, but we always want to make sure that it is functioning at the same standard as either your new server, your previous server, or if you're thinking about getting a server. Next on the puzzle, we've got storage. So I've mentioned some trigger words already. Storage, we're thinking flash drives, we're thinking your phone is full, you need to delete some pictures. We're thinking, I'm saving this to what folder on my computer? Is it going on my OneDrive or is it, am I saving this you know, to the cloud? Am I saving this to the actual PC itself? All of these things, I know we probably see very frequently, it's all storage, data, data storage. Now we're talking about servers. So we gotta kind of blow this up a little bit. So instead of looking at gigabytes on your phone, we're talking terabytes. Instead of looking at saving a file to your laptop, we're looking at saving it on the server. So you are reducing all of the files on your laptop. You're saving it to a larger device instead of the small one. Storage now, okay, we've got, we understand what it is. What if we run out? Well, if you've got a server, say we put one terabyte of storage on your server, there is a couple of different things you can do if it starts to fill up. So you can either expand your server with additional hard drives. You can of course do the delete. You can take things, you can download a hard drive to a backup device and you can take that backup device somewhere else, a file cabinet off-prem to increase storage on your device. But what if it's growing too fast and you need more storage quick? There are things called storage arrays. And what that looks like is a very, I would say a very large, very heavy, because storage is heavy. When you have that on-prem, they are typically boxes about five inches tall and about 25 inches deep, but they just house hard drives. And these do a direct connect into your network. And what does that do? You buy a storage device, or maybe you buy, get it, and you, you handle it somewhere. And when you plug that in, you're getting 20 terabytes and you have five or you're getting a hundred terabytes and you had 20 and it filled up too quick. So you get a hundred. Well, that is how you expand your storage. So you've got, you know, in different server and different IT infrastructures, they can be very small, as I've mentioned, or they can be very large. In every perfect world, we would love to run out of storage really quickly because when that happens, that means business is going well. So 
and not to say that you want to run out of storage, but you want to be prepared. And the purpose of this is to give you the knowledge of what might happen if you do start to run out of storage. A storage array is a very quick and easy solution. You connect it through your network and your server recognizes it as expanded storage. There are very fancy storage arrays out there. Of course, there's always going to be the fancier, faster, newest, cool. That exists, absolutely. If, if for, you know, for Dell, if you're looking at PowerStore, Unity, they're very fancy, very intelligent storage devices, but there's also the more basic side. We've got trigger words like PowerVault is our entry-level storage line. That is a very simplistic addition of storage to your network, very point blank. There are different sides of the spectrum. So low end to high end to just expansion or very, very functional, um, lots of attributes to the storage array itself. It's not too scary, I promise. So when you run out of storage, we get more storage and then you're, you're covered as a business. Now here's where I'm gonna talk about the cloud. So you know maybe you, you don't want to incorporate the storage array. It sounds great, Katie, sounds very cool, but you know the cloud is very enticing. It's right here in front of me. Why would I not just go to the cloud? Well, there's a lot of things that I could go off on a tangent of, but I'm just gonna start right here. When you have cloud and you talk about storage versus having it in-house or shipping it off to the cloud, when you have it in-house, you get to secure it. Your resources are running your storage. Your hardware is what's running your business instead of shipping it off to the cloud and then you put it into someone else's data center. So just think of it that way, whether you ship things off to the cloud or you keep them in house, they are all residing on a server somewhere. Now the difference comes down to a lot of different factors, but what I'm going to tie this in a storage piece is cloud storage starts off, you know, say X price for X amount of storage, but costs start to get you, you know, it's kind of, I know that I do the same thing on my phone. When I run out of storage, I just get more cloud storage, but then I run out of cloud storage, so I have to buy more. Same thing happens with the cloud. It's something to be cautious of when making the decision, when you are expanding and your business is growing, do I buy on-prem storage and pay a flat price for more storage than I'll need for five years? Or do I just go with a cheaper solution right now, but it might run me more cost at the end of the day? Now, every business is gonna be different, small, large, brand new, whether this is the first business you've started or this is the 10th. They're just all things to keep in the back of your mind when, like I mentioned, as technology is developing, as our new innovations coming out, cloud is not going anywhere, but it is just very important to understand the difference between on-prem storage, on-prem server, on-prem network versus cloud. You are having your own resources versus borrowing someone else's. Like I said, this is an, a hardware on-prem call. So touching on storage, it's holding a hard drive versus uploading it to a cloud. Security, be security benefits, you know, I would say those really reside in-house. Maintenance benefits, you get to maintain your hardware the way you want to. Power benefits, you're backing up your server the way you want to. That whether you're, you know, you have a UPS that's delivering clean energy, you get to maintain. And it's a very malleable situation when you have on-prem hardware. Listing here a couple of common terms to relate to storage as we close out storage databases. Those fill up hard drives very fast. Files, so all your cat pictures, all your family photos, um, any of your backgrounds or your PowerPoints that you've been making, that's all file storage. Application storage, whether you've got Outlook running, you've got a SQL database. I mentioned a couple of these, you know, SAP, Oracle, SQL, Outlook, QuickBooks, Peachtree, Dentrix, that's all application storage. That's all something to keep in mind when it comes to, you know, gauging how much storage you might need right off the bat and in a couple of years. Cloud, we just spoke about that and backup. Backup is very, very important. So you want to make sure that you are allocating resources for backup at all times. And if it's not on your server and you do a software backup or you have, you know, a tape backup or something similar to that, that's fine. You just want to keep that in mind. These are all things to keep in the back of your head when, of course, when starting a business, maintaining your business. Um, or, you know, doing it again and starting, you know, you did one business this way and now you kind of want to do some things a little different, make sure you're a little more proactive this time. All of these things are going to kind of factor into how much storage you might be looking at. So transitioning into security. Security is kind of that last branch of our tree here, last piece of our puzzle. We've talked about lots of different hardware. Refresher, server, we talked about management, we talked about networking, we talked about storage. So the three physical pieces of hardware there, server, and then we've got networking, you know, 
box with a bunch of ports. We saw what the server looked like. Storage, it's going to be a, just a bigger server. Houses a bunch of hard drives. What it does, you know, many fancy things or just simplistic storage expansion, but security. This is all about protecting your investment. You know, whether you're a brand new business and you've never done this, like I mentioned, and you this is all brand new to you, security should be absolutely at the forefront of your mind. And it probably is. You know, my entire business relies on this database or my entire business relies on this software. And if someone hacks this, if a data intrusion happens, what am I going to do? You know, and this all can be controlled from an enterprise level hardware, you know, uh, from enterprise level hardware, that point blank. So you can incorporate a firewall. There are vendors that you might have heard of called um, SonicWall, Fortinet. Um, firewalls look like boxes are about seven inches wide, I'd say maybe you know seven to eight inches deep. So smaller boxes, they can incorporate right into your server room or your server cabinet. Firewalls is like a bubble. It's like bubble wrap around your environment. So any of these data intrusions, malware, I mean, I'm talking any sort of raspberry bugs, you think of anything that can come into your, into your environment and it's bubble wrap, it keeps it safe. Everything inside is protected. You can also control you know, websites that your, your employees are accessing. You don't want them to watch too many YouTube videos today. Block, you don't trust this website, Facebook, that's a very common one. Block, you know, education systems, a lot of school districts have a lot of restrictions. How do you think they do that? It's all for security, but how? Well, that's through the security measures taken via software, via hardware firewall, all things that we want to make sure we're keeping cautious. A little story time, um, you know, I am an avid Target shopper. I'm sure a lot of people have been to Target before. A long time ago, I say a long time ago, a couple years ago, what happened? Well, they had a data breach and I remember no one wanted to shop at Target for a while because all the credit card information had gotten leaked. That was practically worldwide news. I mean, that affected a ton of people. But for them, what do you think that did to their reputation? You know, what are people going to think of Target after this happens? Well, I guarantee you that, you know, people had a little different opinion for a little, a little bit of time. That's a lot of money they lost. It's a lot of revenue they lost. It's a lot of time they lost. But that could have been prevented, and I don't work at Target, but that probably could have been prevented with extra security measures, or maybe, you know, someone dropped the ball somewhere and didn't replace something or a software with licensing that had expired. All of this is security, and that Target is a much more grand scheme of what could happen with a data breach, but it is very relatable and very relevant. So your business, it, it revolves around this hardware, these applications your network, the storage we just talked about. You, you invest in all this and it's running amazing. It's doing your business, everything, blowing every ex expectation out of the water. We've got to secure it. You know, there, there are different vendors, there are different ways, but security should always be at the forefront, forefront of all your IT investments. You know, a lot of small businesses, you know, there, there's a statistic out there and I don't want to get it wrong, but it's a heavy, heavy, heavy percentage of small businesses that cannot afford a data breach. It's not that they can't come back for it. They can't afford it. You know, time is money. Like I've said, well, at the same time, you know, your, your investment is, is running your whole business. So a security breach could make or break. It can make or break you. It can make or break your business. It could make or break an employee. Anything of that manner ties into why security is important. We are going to tie these together and um, just kind of recapping. This is all about making technology. I hope that this has made the idea of on-prem technology and hardware a little less daunting. There are ways that you can start your journey, your IT journey in a new business, um, in, an, in another new business. Maybe this is a third or fourth venture for you or your first one. A lot of this that I wanna drive home is just having the knowledge of what you need and what it can do for you, how it can benefit you. Servers, they are not scary. They seem cool and it sounds like I can use a lot of fancy words. It's a big computer built for your business to deliver everything your business needs to your employees. Simply put, networking, you've got to give your server a good sized tunnel to use. You've got to give your, your traffic a big enough highway so that you're not seeing latency. Time is money in business. We don't want any of that. So having that understanding of how a good network can benefit you is very important. And this too ties in years down the road. You start to see latency. If things start to take a while to load, 
this all comes back to your network or if you know, just a maintenance check, log into that management pane that we broadcasted and we, we've launched it, check your network, you know, check your server. Very simplistic. You just pop it up, whether you're in the Bahamas or when you're in California, that's how you can check things like your network. Storage. I'm out of storage. I got the server two years ago and I got 10 terabytes on it. I'm out. Well, we talked about a couple of ways that you can relieve that. You know, there's things like the cloud, there's things like storage arrays, there's backup devices, there are file devices of hardware, all that you can incorporate within your environment. And then security. We've got a pretty blue package here. Imagine this as your data center in a nice pretty blue box. Security ties the bow around it. It keeps the box closed. It keeps people from, you know, getting into it too easily and it keeps all of your investments inside a nice pretty package. Security is the protection of your investment. And I could not say that enough times without sounding like I'm on repeat. I wanna thank you guys all for attending today. Um, I really hope that you do leave here. If not, remembering something that you already knew and maybe had forgotten or you have gained a lot of new information. Um, if you guys have any questions, of course, I know we are doing a little bit of a Q&A, so please feel free to ask. Um, if not, thank you very much. Awesome information, Katie. Thank you so much. Um, I think it's just a wealth of knowledge and I know it can be an intimidating topic um, if you are a new business owner um, or an entrepreneur kind of taking those next steps. But um, I love all of the different analogies and ways that you broke it down for us today. That was great. So everyone, this kind of opens up our Q&A session. I know we don't have a typical Q&A button, but if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask, please feel free to type those in and drop them in the chat or you're welcome to come off mute. and and um, ask those live uh, if you'd like as well. And I see one question already coming in uh, directly here. So the question is, I operate a small business in Michigan and totally need to upgrade equipment that is around 10 plus years old. Um, is there any kind of consulting services available to help uh, those kind of configurations of the hardware and the software? Absolutely, that is a great question. So. Being in small business, we see this very frequently. You know, 10 years, I would that I've seen 20 years, I've seen 15 years. Um, it, 10 years is definitely, like you mentioned, a great time to start inquiring on replacing that hardware. But when you come to small business, especially at Dell, we've got a whole team of, we've got representatives, we've got people like myself who house the knowledge to help you figure that out. So you come to us, you say, I've got these many employees, I've got these many applications, this is how much my business has grown in 10 years. This is the exact machine that I have. We're very familiar with that kind of inquiry, honestly. So you, you bring us that information and we have teams of, I mean, I'm a CSS. I've got technical sales reps that I work with, um, just people that I work with every day. They could answer all of your questions, make knowledgeable suggestions to help you figure out what the next step is for your business. And it sounds like that's a server inquiry that we we love that. We do it all day long. That's That's why a lot of us love working in small business, help you make the next step. And really quick before we move to the next question, because exactly that, we have such a large team of resources. You can actually visit dell.com forward slash startup nation, and that will have all the contact information to get in touch with an advisor and get in touch with Katie and the rest of our team. But Roy, I see um, you had come off mute. Please let me know if you have any questions. Well, yes, um, I do deal with consulting service. I'm sorry. My name is Roy Williams. And I deal, and, um, I'm the owner of the Royal Family. Oh, Roy, I, I think LLC. we. And I do deal with um, dealing with Dale um, or dealing with Ascend or Intel. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Sorry, it was breaking up at the very beginning, um, if you don't Hello? mind. Yep, can you hear us, Roy? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, it, it's um, breaking up just a little bit. Okay, probably why I'm, I'm outside. Um, uh, can you hear me now? We sure can. Okay, well, as I was explaining, my name is Roy Williams and I'm the owner of the Royal Family LLC. And um, I do deal in consulting services based upon certain products with Microsoft or Dell or Intel and things of that nature. And, um, Upon some of them, I'm very keyed in upon uh, working with um with Microsoft products because Microsoft is kind of is more simpler than some of the rest. And 
it's not it, it's not that hard for individuals to go in and try to get up on. That's great. So you're familiar with the products and, and we work yeah, very closely with Microsoft and partner with them quite a bit. So that's fantastic. Um, and you said you're a consultant, like a, a technology consultant? Well, no, I deal with rightfully um, job placement services and programs dealing with other um, inmates, um, to which I'm trying to work on a, um, certain things here now. And I was looking to get the thing going on with um, local initiative um, support corporation, which was dealing with LISIC, which is spelled L-I-S-C, and that of Verizon. And, and they, they haven't told me anything yet, so I'm, I'm still hoping. <laughs> All right. Well, crossing fingers. And um, I'll, I'll drop my email as well in the chat. So if anyone does have any um, questions or if, Roy, if you'd like to follow up with me, feel free to shoot me an email and we can uh, follow up from there as well. Okay. Thank you. First. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Any, awesome. Any other questions regarding um, Katie's presentation today around enterprise solutions? We also have, we have a, a great partnership with Startup Nation. So you as a Startup Nation member or attendee today, you have access to some additional savings. So if you are thinking about, hey, I really do need to start to consider a server, I need to look into some new client solutions like laptops and desktops or monitors and accessories, you do have access to savings because you are a Startup Nation member. So you can visit dell.com forward slash Startup Nation, access your savings there, as well as all the contact information to get in touch with our team. But I know we're coming up close to time, so any other questions before we break for today? All right. Well, I know this session is being recorded as well, so please feel free once this is uh, posted Startup Nation side to share this with your fellow colleagues or those in your network that you think might benefit from this content and this information as well. It's definitely a growing topic and um, is definitely important to get ahead of for your business and uh, get in front of these types of solutions and we're happy to be there to support. So thanks everyone for attending and we hope everyone has a great rest of your week and weekend and we'll talk soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you.